Hello my dear students I'm Dr. Vaishali Bharambe I've been teaching anatomy for more than 25 years and I love it Today quick and fast embryology of hydrocele let's dive in So now what you're seeing here is during what is happening in the descent of testes and how does it affect and result in formation of hydrocele let's understand What you're seeing here is the developing testes in the dorsal wall of the abdomen covered by a layer of peritoneum this is a pubic symphysis and this here is the gubernaculum attaching the developing testes down to the early scrotum okay now what happens as the developing testes will descend a layer of peritoneum leads the way this layer of peritoneum or a fold of peritoneum is called sacus vaginalis okay so testes is descending uh, covered by a layer of peritoneum Let's take a look now what happens. This is your descending testes. In front of it there is a fold of peritoneum leading the way. This fold of peritoneum which leads the way is called processus vaginalis which is a elongation of sacus vaginalis. Okay? So testes is descending down leading the way is a fold of peritoneum called processus vaginalis. You have to get that in your brain. okay now what happens what happens now so testes has finally brought, found its way into the scrotum the processus vaginalis has got obliterated observe observe note can you see that can you see that that's the processus vaginalis getting obliterated and leaving behind a little sac called tunica vaginalis which kind of surrounds the testes okay so think about it testes was in the abdominal wall it's descending down leading the way is processus vaginalis as the testes come into the scrotum processus vaginalis surrounds it forming a sac called tunica vaginalis but its communication with the abdominal cavity is obliterated understand it once again that's the testes that's the processus vaginalis leading the way at this moment of time processus is communicating with the abdominal cavity with time the testes have come into the bottom of the scrotum the processus vaginalis is getting obliterated leaving behind a sac the tunica vaginalis clear basically the whole lecture is based on this these first two three minutes everything else is the applied of this So in relation to development how does hydrocele form variable closure of this processus vaginalis results in formation of hydrocele see normally the processus vaginalis is obliterated by the time the child is born or will be obliterated by the child is born, by the time the child is one year but if it doesn't happen if the processus vaginalis persists Let's take a look at what happens. So that's the abdominal cavity, that's the patient's scrotum, and that's the unobliterated processus vaginalis, which is communicating freely with the abdominal cavity. Correct? Okay. So what will happen if the abdominal cavity is in communication with the patient's uh, scrotal sac? What's going to happen is the abdominal contents are going to want to come through this tubular opening. out intra abdominal pressure is high so the contents are going to want to come in resulting in what is called continuity inguinal hernia if contents can come so can the fluid so the fluid can come down resulting in what is called hydrocele that's how hydrocele gets produced okay so today i'm not going to talk about the hernia because i have already released videos on it plus the topic is embryology of hydrocele so take a look at this image This is normal anatomy okay so here you are seeing the obliterated processus vaginalis obliterated till the deep inguinal vein lower down little sac remains to surround the testes forming what is called tunica vaginalis this is the testes behind this here is the vas deferens and epididymis and this is the intestine properly in the abdominal cavity not coming inside the scrotal sac etc this is normal anatomy Now let's see what happens and how hydrocele's are formed with an embryological basis. So here what you are seeing is a vaginal hydrocele. 
what has happened the processes vaginalis is obliterated but the portion of it which is surrounding the testes becomes quite large allowing for accumulation of fluid so much is the fluid accumulation that the testes is almost not palpable in this person this is called as a vaginal hydrocele why are you calling it vaginal because it is formed in the tunica vaginalis see this is the vaginal hydrocele it is formed in the tunica vaginalis and therefore it's called vaginal hydrocele quickly let's do the features it has does it have a communication with peritoneal cavity no where is it found always found in the lower end of the scrotum never above and it has no change in size when the patient is sitting the whole day when the patient is lying down the whole day there will be no change in the size of the hydrocele sac how will you differentiate it from others remember it is localized to the tunica vaginalis it is not extending into the spermatic cord and it does not enter into the processes vaginalis okay so these are features let's use these as we study the rest of hydrocele's infantile hydrocele what is this take a look the images speak for itself that's why i give you so many images this is infantile hydrocele see how it is obliterated at the level of deep inguinal ring but the rest of the processes vaginalis is patent allowing for fluid collection okay so what will the features be features will be no communication with peritoneal cavity but the hydrocele sac will extend upwards almost till the inguinal canal or even through it till the deep inguinal ring so that's the feature how will you differentiate infantile hydrocele from others if it's a congenital hydrocele it would have communication with the peritoneal cavity so it's not a congenital it has no communication if it's an encysted hydrocele encysted hydrocele is in the spermatic cord you can palpate the testis separately okay and the fluid is confined only to the spermatic cord if it's an encysted hydrocele why is it not a vaginal hydrocele because vaginal hydrocele stops at the level of the testis it doesn't go ahead into the inguinal canal okay so now begin to understand how you are separating these different hydrocele vaginal hydrocele infantile hydrocele now encysted hydrocele you can see here that above and below the processes vaginalis got fused but in between it remained unfused resulting in development of a fluid collected sac called encysted hydrocele so features no communication with the peritoneal cavity fluid collects within the spermatic cord fluid filled sac is independent of testes you can tell that this is the testes and this is the sac okay it lies above the testes how will you differentiate it from other hydrocele's infantile hydrocele will extend into the inguinal canal congenital hydrocele will communicate with the peritoneal cavity vaginal hydrocele surrounds the testes but does not go above it so these are features which separate your encysted hydrocele from others so then what's congenital hydrocele take a look this is the patent processes vaginalis communicating with the abdominal cavity so fluid from abdominal cavity will come inside fluid from the processes will go back in which means that i want you to take a look before we go ahead fluid can come in fluid can go out okay so which means that the size of this hydrocele is going to fluctuate the patient is lying down maybe in the morning the size of the hydrocele is very less patient stands up spends the whole day standing the fluid slowly makes its way size of hydrocele is much larger so size will change clear communication with peritoneal cavity how will you differentiate from others vaginal hydrocele was limited to the lower part of scrotum there was no fluctuation in size encysted hydrocele in the spermatic cord no fluctuation in size infantile hydrocele limited till the deep inguinal ring no fluctuation in size got it right so now let's talk about one last little thing when processes vaginalis does remain patent but the patency is so large that the intestines want to come in too can you see the intestine coming in here 
So this is a congenital hydrocele with a hernia. So fluid is already there, which is resulting in a hydrocele. But this is a hydrocele associated with a hernia. Okay, right. So now understand that from this my discussion, you should have understood hydrocele can be communicating or they can be non-communicating. What do you mean by communicating? That means that opening into the abdominal cavity is still patent. The size of the hydrocele is going to change. Okay, fluid will freely move between the hydrocele and abdominal cavity. Example, congenital hydrocele can be associated with a hernia. Non-communicating, whatever is there, there is a problem, but it is not communicating with the abdominal cavity. It can be vaginal, which is limited to lower scrotal sac. It can be encysted, limited inside the spermatic cord. Infantile, limited till the deep inguinal ring. Nobody here is communicating with the peritoneal cavity. So these are the examples. If you get these fundamentals clear, you will know your hydrocele discussions and be able to participate in them much more easily. So with that, I complete my short presentation on embryology of hydrocele. I really hope that it has helped you to understand the embryology of how hydrocele are formed. For the rest of the development of male reproductive system, please watch my lectures, Male Reproductive System Development 1 and 2. Uh, there, there's also a separate lecture on development of the external genitalia. Feel free to watch that as well. If you like this lecture, do like and subscribe to my channel and really write comments on what more you want from me in your journey through anatomy. I would love to help you out and make sure that you have, you have this journey which is not only enjoyable but parallelly also knowledgeable. Remember, my channel also gives you MCQs and the same lecture in the form of uh, handouts. So you can go on the website and you can use those notes for revision in case you've liked the lecture. Okay, so I'll see you across the screen in my next video. Thank you.